Hey guys, Rick Says here. Welcome to another episode of the Outdoor Biz Podcast, where I hope to provide entertaining conversations with retailers, brand managers, athletes, executives, and others in the outdoor biz to get their stories, tips, strategies, productivity tricks, and ideas that you can apply and take your career business to the next level. Hey guys, today on the Outdoor Biz Podcast, we are speaking with Amy Roberts. Fresh from the recent Outdoor Retailer Show, Amy tells us about the Outdoor Industry Association, and we talk a little bit about public lands. Enjoy. Hey guys, Rick Says here with another episode of the Outdoor Biz Podcast. Today we're speaking with Amy Roberts. Amy is the Executive Director of the Outdoor Industry Association. Welcome to the show, Amy. Thank you for having me on. Awesome. Great to chat with you. Are you uh, recovered from OR yet, or you're looking forward to doing that next week in Kauai? Yeah, I mean, it's been uh, fairly quiet around the office this week. Um, everyone's here, but I think people are still trying to sleep in a bit and, and get some rest and recover from um, OR, but really the last six months just to lead up to it. So Yeah, you guys have had a, a busy stretch. Yeah, I mean, one of the uh, – during the OIA board meeting, Daryl Denny, who works at Emerald, mentioned that – from the time from our call with Herbert to when um, the trade show was announced in Denver was 116 days. So it brought wow. home for me how tight that time frame was. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> yeah. So um, to be sure our audience is up to speed, why don't we start, um, tell them a little bit about the Outdoors Industry Association and what you guys do. Sure. So we have 1,200 members, and um, we really represent the breadth of the industry. So we've got the well-known brands um, like a North Face, Patagonia, Columbia, a lot of the you know mid-sized and small brands in the industry like a Nemo or Toad and Co. And yeah. then we have um, big retailers like a Cabela's or REI down to the specialty retailers, and then really the supply chain. So we've got a lot of supply chain members as well. So. Yeah really the whole supply chain of the industry, and we do a lot of work um, on behalf of the industry. Awesome. And you have a strong background in government affairs and sustainability and a degree in journalism. Did you want to be a journalist or work in government? I wanted to be a journalist. So I uh-huh. that was what I wanted to be since fifth grade. And I wow. had a family newspaper called Amy's Advocate. Oh, cool. I, produced and got subscriptions for from my aunts and uncles. And, awesome. uh, yeah, so I always knew that's what I wanted to be. And I went to journalism school in college at the University of Missouri. Mm-hmm. And um, so I did work as a journalist for about 10 years before transitioning to working on campaigns. Oh, wow. Interesting. Yeah. And what was your first exposure to the outdoors? Did you go camping as a kid or how did you get into the outdoor side of the world? Yeah, I mean, my parents definitely took us camping. Um, I was fortunate that my mom's, two of my mom's brothers that live in Colorado have climbed all the 14ers here. Wow, That's great. a big thing in Colorado, you know, like 54. And yeah. um, one, the youngest brother is actually not that far in age for me because I'm the oldest grandchild. And so he and I have done quite a bit of mountaineering together when I was a kid. But, you know, even to this day, we still go out quite a bit. So I have... Oh, cool. Oh, the, the mentor, and I think that's what we all know is you got to have that mentor to take you. And that's how so many of us got into the outdoors. Yeah, exactly. And I think that's a good point for for you know young folks wanting to get in the outdoors. We we still need to continue to find those folks that are interested and get them out there, take them fishing, take them hiking, whatever. I mean, just get them outside. Yeah, for sure. And I think, um, you know, we definitely know, like through the work of our foundation, which focuses on participation, that if you have this kind of one-off experience, it might not be impactful enough to create this lifelong opportunity, right. you know, giving the kid the gear, but also the ability to go outside, you know, repeatedly. Right, right. Really Good enough. So what was your first outdoor job? Uh, so after I was actually working, um, I worked on a campaign and I worked for the, the governor in Idaho. And then I was working for Micron Technology, which is a semiconductor company. Mm-hmm. And I was spending all my time on the weekends, you know, rock climbing at that time. And I, so I basically quit my job in my early thirties, which my dad was completely horrified. <laughs> and, uh, took the year off and I climbed in Red Rocks and also lived in Yosemite that summer and did some international trips. And when I 
ran out of money and needed to get a job again, I knew at that time I wanted to work in the outdoor industry. So I uh, moved back to Colorado, where I'm from, and got a job with Bicycle Colorado. So that was my first you know, effort really working for an advocacy group in that, that, you know, focused on outdoor activity. Oh, very cool. And how did you, how long did you do that for a couple of years, handful of years? Yeah, I was at uh, Bicycle Colorado really for about 18 months. And then a position in government affairs opened up at OIA. And so that, mm-hmm. that was a great fit for me because I had, you know, 10 years of government affairs or lobbying experience, right. but I knew I wanted to, you know, lobby for the outdoor industry. And so, you know, I was able to get, it was actually a part-time job here. And so I oh. took that and then, you know, quickly it turned into full-time and, Johnson, who headed up the government affairs for a long time at OIA, left, and so created the opportunity for me to step into that role. Awesome! Yeah, that was that was perfect. And then you you went to uh, MEC, is that right? Before you got into the role you're in now. Yeah, so I worked in uh, government affairs for OIA, and then I also worked on the Eco Index project, which is the sustainability tool that helps mm-hmm. um, companies understand their, you know, footprint, their environmental footprint right. and the footprint of products. And so there be, there was an opening in sustainability at MEC, and I really wanted to take that, those learnings and apply them at a brand or retailer. Mm-hmm. And so I had that opportunity. And then also just the opportunity to live in Canada was great, too. Um, Vancouver is an amazing city. Yeah, Vancouver is a cool city. Yeah, I mean, it's like MEC is a great brand, and I really enjoyed working for David Laverstore, the seat there. And then, of course, I think Vancouver always gets rated one of the top ten places. Geography with the ocean and mountains meeting was pretty incredible. So it was a great opportunity. We were up there for three and a half years. Yeah, cool. And uh, do you have any fresh thoughts on the Salt Lake experience now that OR is over and it's moving on to Denver? Well, I, you know, I think we had a good run in Salt Lake, and I felt like in public affairs, uh, we made, a, you know, quite a lot of progress there during our time there. You know, things got established, like the Office of Outdoor Recreation, which was the first in the nation. Um, we made headway with different governors, but I think in the end, it really was the election of President Trump that probably created this series of events that had it yeah. because I think um, – you know, once the monument review came into place, it became pretty obvious that we were not going to be able to reach agreement. And so I, you know, I think that was a pretty tumultuous period. But I also mm-hmm. think, um, you know, we left in the way that we wanted to. And people are excited about Denver just because I think everyone knows that's going to be a great cultural fit as well. And I think the embrace we've gotten from the elected officials has really tightened up. So I I heard a lot of melancholy in Salt Lake about saying goodbye to our friends there, but also a lot of excitement for what's ahead. Yeah, it felt like the show had a more energy than recent shows, upbeat energy. Yeah, I mean, one thing that's come out of the whole experience is that the industry, how unified the industry, public lands issue, and a couple of data points. I mean, our Capital Summit is in April, and we usually have about 60 people, and this year we had 130 wow. attendees. So, so many people from the industry that had not come before felt energized by the public lands discussion and also just wanting to, you know, get engaged in the monuments discussion. And then the industry breakfast, I mean, Sally Jewell was a straw. So she nailed it. Yeah, she nailed it. That might have been our... That was definitely, I think, our most crowded industry breakfast ever. I mean, it was standing room. So I do think there's a lot of industry excitement around our raised profile and what we can do with that. Yeah, I agree. I think um, moving forward, we have a lot, you know, we have a lot of troops rallied to to fight this fight. So we're, and you guys are in the thick of it. I mean, you're, you're on the forefront almost daily, right? Yeah, I mean, it's. You know, I think like everyone, uh, or at least most people, we didn't expect the outcome from the election. So while we had planned, you know, to work with either candidate, um, I think most people thought that um, Hillary Clinton would win. So after everybody thought that. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, after and I think maybe even President Trump thought that. But after (laughs) the president, he had to shift 
pretty quickly to figuring out, okay, well, what does this administration look like? And it's been challenging because it's not really a traditional Republican administration. Right. He's definitely got his own uh, populist twist. And so just trying to understand, like, how would the relationship be with the land management agency? And I feel like, um, you know, the Monuments Review also, in some ways, it teed up the, a topic for us to all rally around and mm-hmm. I think the public to rally around. So yeah, I agree. Not for sure in that comment period. And so has that changed how you work with the government folks or the structure of your business at all? Uh, I think that we're playing defense a little more in Washington than we were last year. Mm -hmm. Um, However, I think, you know, we're capable of doing both. And so we are trying to also build, you know, our offensive posture. So one of the things is we've got, you know, these – outdoor recreation caucuses we've created in the House and Senate, mm-hmm. and we have members of both parties in those caucuses. So it's a way of, you know, building our troops on the ground in Congress to both advance our recreation agenda, but also push back when we disagree. Um, and then we've right. got a new bill that just got introduced this week called the Recreation Not Red Tape Act. And that the whole idea behind mm-hmm. that is to streamline the permitting process for access. I was just reading public. about that, yeah. Yeah, so we and that has bipartisan sponsorship. So I, you know, I think while there's a lot of focus on, you know, the fact we're playing defense a bit on the monuments, we've got some positive things going as well. Right. And I was talking to Kenji Hartunian at the show. I interviewed him on the show floor the other day. And one of the things that keeps coming up in my mind is how can how can we leverage the connections that brands have with consumers and retailers have with consumers to kind of reach out to those those folks and, and generate that constituency to, to bring more force to bear on the government of folks? Yeah, I think we're we're starting to see brands doing that, and it's been really interesting because the comment period for the monuments review um, was about six weeks long, mm-hmm. and it, you know, that's the perfect opportunity to engage consumers. And so you definitely saw the North Face, you know, REI, Patagonia, Keen, some of the other brands talking to their consumers, talking about right. the monuments review, asking people to go online and comment about the monument in their local community. And so that generated, you know, two and a half million comments from the American public, and I think that outdoor industry companies generated, you know, a thing. Yeah, probably most of those, yeah. Yeah, so I, I mean, that was a great, um, that was a great example of engaging consumers, and I, um, I think we're going to continue to see more of that, and what I think it shows, too, is that, you know, we've really tried to focus on having people think back about how do they spend their weekends or what's a favorite memory from your childhood and right. Republicans and Democrats share that. And so the more we can take partisanship out of the outdoors, the better off we're going to be. Right. I agree. Yeah. And it, it seems like there's an opportunity to get a lot more proactive, like uh, the, the fishing industry did the take me fishing campaign a few years ago, you know, some, some kind of opportunity like that where through brands and retailers, we're just, you know, inspiring people every day would be an interesting opportunity. Yeah, I agree. And I I think um, people respond when they feel like something they love is threatened or could be taken away. And I think that's what we saw. And in some ways, I think the administration, by reviewing 26 monuments um, spread across the country, they got much higher engagement than maybe they were (laughs) expecting. Yeah, they didn't know the the line they were awakening. (laughs) Yeah, I think that's I think that's right. So I yeah. feel like now it's you know what's our next step? So how do we take this momentum and you know continue to weigh in? And I, the other opportunity, which is new for OIA, is working at the state and local level. And I think that's an opportunity to engage uh, employees d- that are deeper in brands that might not come to the Capitol Summit, but they can go right. work on a ballot initiative or go to their city council meeting and. So, you know, that's an area that we're definitely focused on. Right. Awesome. Well, if we can help, I'm on the board of California Wilderness Coalition. So if we can do anything to that or let us know, that'd be great. Yeah. Thanks for mentioning that. I mean, a lot of the work gets done by on the ground groups. Right. Yeah. Yeah. 
So um, I bet you guys are excited for the move to Denver. Have you begun? I'm sure the planning process, the planning activities have already begun, right? Yeah, I mean, well, I think one of the exciting things about the January show is that it's going to be a combination of outdoor retailer and the snow show. And so right. the idea behind that was to create efficiency for vendors or retailers who go to both. So they have just one event to attend. And so there's, I think the planning right now that really is being, you know, led by the outdoor retailer team is how do we bring those two cultures together. Mm-hmm. So there's like a high level, you know, what's the show look like? And then they're just doing the work of figuring out how do you combine these two shows with a new convention center? What's the floor plan look like? So the tactics of it are underway as well. Cool. Yeah, it's funny. We used to be together many, many years ago. <laughs> I know. And now we're back. That was before my time. I know. So I, it is pretty interesting. It'll, I'm excited to see, um, you know, see how it goes. And I also think Denver's going to roll out the red carpet. So I think they've got some big events planned, yeah. basically welcoming all of us to Denver. Any plans to resurrect the Polly party? Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> that'd be funny. That'd be hilarious. Uh, yeah. That'd be great. We might come together and pull that off. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and um, what are the, what other outdoor activities do you participate in still? Uh, um, well, now I would say I'm more, you know, hiker. Um, I do a bunch of skiing. My daughter actually be racing fail. She's just little. She's 11. But because of that, we end up skiing quite a bit on the weekends. Cool. Um, yeah. yeah. Mountain biking, hiking in the summer. Um, I don't do as much, you know, technical rock climbing anymore as I mm-hmm. used to. But, um, you know, still try to get outside as much as possible. Awesome. And uh, do you have any suggestions or advice for folks either wanting to get into the outdoor biz or folks maybe wanting to grow their career that are currently in the outdoor biz? Well, a couple things, you know, in terms of getting into the business, um, you know, I always think that one of the best things you can do is bring the operations experience. So I always feel like working in the supply chain is a great way to get in because you understand, you know, how products are made and, you know, what's the what's the business relationship? So the more, you know, if you want to work in advocacy eventually or sustainability, I think the best background you can really, you know, an operations supply chain background. And, yeah, that's a good um, perspective. Yeah. yeah. So and then I think in terms of building your career, um, so two years ago, we launched at OIA the Skip Yell Future Leadership Academy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And. This is our second year. We've had we have around thirty participants this year that are mid career in the industry. And the idea behind that, you know, I think Steve Barker deserves a lot of credit for the idea was to create more people like him in the future so that yeah, you're working in the outdoor industry and you came here because you have this certain value set and now you're, you know, maybe an accountant and that feels like your daily job and you might be in a cube. Um, right. Like you've always called them cubicle refugees. So how do you <laughs> how do you get to do the things that are why the reason you came? And that was the point of the uh, Skip the Owl Academy is really to say you can be a mentor and you can also meet your friends or meet colleagues that work for other companies and then right. you know find out about you know how do you engage in advocacy? How do you get involved in the sustainability? And then how do you inspire? yourself or your colleagues to sort of rise up and be the next generation of leadership in the industry, serve on boards, that type of thing. Right. Well, we'll put a link to that in the show notes. That's awesome. Yeah, that'd be great. I think we'll we'll probably open the application process for the next class here in the next couple months. Cool. Awesome. We'll be sure to stay on that. And do um, you have any daily routines that you have to keep your sanity and health? Uh, well, I would say that my outdoor exercise routine, is like on a weekly basis, has not been great during the last <laughs> month. So that's something I definitely intend to correct. You've had a pretty good excuse though for the last few months. <laughs> yeah, but I, um, you know, I do. I definitely try to get out on the weekends, and um, you know, I my, you know, I sometimes I'll think about, okay, well, if I'm going to meet somebody for coffee, like, hey, let's just go for a hike instead. Yeah. So, cool. Yeah, that's kind of – and then, you know, we're right next to the bike path here in Boulder, so there's just an opportunity to even get out during the day and go for a quick run yeah, or awesome. bike ride during lunch. So. Cool. And uh, do you have any favorite books, or do you give books as gifts very often? 
Yeah, sometimes I do. Um, I was just asked out for the a different uh, interview I did, and one of the, my favorite books, um, well, there's a couple. You know, I like Fear and Loathing and, uh, on the Campaign Trail. Mm-hmm. I was a Hunter Good Thompson one. fan, and it seems like it applies more than ever these days. And, um, <laughs> yeah. and then one of my favorite books was Buying the Night Flight by Georgie Ann Geyer, and she was a, one of the first female foreign correspondents. Oh, interesting. That's what inspired me to really want to be. I actually wanted to be a foreign correspondent. So, Mm -hmm. yeah, I think sometimes, and then, of course, I've spent all my, you know, a lot of time reading the the climbing adventure book. So, Mm -hmm. Anna Perna and some of the classics. Right. Cool. We'll we'll link to those that you mentioned in the show notes. Um, And uh, how about a favorite piece of gear under $100? Probably the... um, well, MEC has a great jacket that is called. Wow, Hunter. really? Yeah. And it was one of the top sellers there. And it's uh, like a lightweight um, insulated jacket. So, yeah, check out the uplink. Oh, cool. Favorite. Well, look at that. The uplink it's called, huh? Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. And uh, anything you want to say to our audience or ask of our audience? No, I would just say that, um, I, you know, I appreciate everyone's support of the outdoor retailer show this summer and the people who came out and took part in the march and helped us show our love for public lands and just that was super fun yeah my ask is just like stay engaged and get involved and i think with the new outdoor recreation economy data out there's an opportunity to talk to your local member of congress so go see a district it's pretty easy to get an appointment yeah, we're a few of us are pretty active here in Bishop. We call our guy, some of us daily. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. I mean, that's, you know, people think about coming to D.C., but one of the most effective things is on the ground engagement because what they care about is how they're being perceived back home for sure. And you, you can see the activism at these town halls. So, yeah, um, there's a huge opportunity there for our industry as well. Yeah, and I tell the story. I don't know if you remember a few years ago at Outdoor Retailer, there was a event at, at Cafe Molise, and Steve was about to get up and say something, and he grabbed the mic, and he said, there's a local politician from Washington in town. I'm going to hand the mic over to him, and he just told a great story about what those guys need. You know, he said, we need, we need you to get a bunch of your buddies together and come down and meet with us and tell us what to do and what you want us to do. And then when we do it right, come down and tell us good job. Or if we do it wrong, come down and tell us, God, you blew it, you know? And I thought that's just such a great, you know, people don't realize that those guys are you know, accessible. So go down there and hit them up. Tell them what you think. Yeah, I think that's right. And I think the other thing is just, you know, they, they are watching, you know, what their local news coverage is or what yeah. the letters to the editor say. And I mean, that matters. They've got people in D.C actually not for them and you know you see them on the airplane or you see them at the coffee shop and yeah go up and talk to them and i i think the you know giving them the out the rec economy data is huge so that, you know i think that's something we can arm everyone with um, yeah in that's great district. yeah no i agree yeah awesome and uh where can people find you on linkedin or facebook what's the best way for people to if they want to reach out to you um well, I do have a Twitter account that um, I fall, you know, that I'm online in terms of, you know, tweeting stories that are specific to OIA. So you'll find me there. And then, um, yeah, I'm LinkedIn and also Facebook. So you can find me on different media. But, you know, I'd say, uh, I, you know, I think on Facebook and Instagram, you know, I'd say follow OIA because that's where we're going to have the most news about what the industry is doing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We'll link to that. And what's your Twitter account? It's at Amy Roberts OIA. At Amy Roberts OIA. Cool. All right. We'll put I that up there. I remember the OIA was in there. <laughs> at Amy Roberts OIA. So, yeah, I'll tweet out some stories. There's quite a bit going on, even though Congress is in recess. So Yeah. Yeah. There's always stuff going on. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I appreciate the time, Amy. Thanks. And uh, enjoy your time off on holiday next week. And we'll catch up soon. Okay. Thanks a lot. Great to talk to you. All right. Thanks. Bye-bye. All right, I hope you enjoyed that conversation with Amy Roberts. You can find Amy on Twitter, at Amy Roberts OIA, and be sure to follow the Outdoor Industry Association on Facebook and Instagram. You can find links to all the info we discussed in the show notes at theoutdoorbizpodcast.com slash episode 022. I appreciate the support and feedback, and until next time, thank you so much for listening. If you want more of the Outdoor Biz Podcast, 
you can subscribe on iTunes and Stitcher or go to the outdoorbizpodcast.com where you find all the episodes, show notes, and much, much more. You can find us on Facebook and Instagram at the Outdoor Biz Podcast, Twitter at Rick underscore Says, that's S-A-E-Z, and my email is rick at the outdoorbizpodcast.com. Thanks for listening and all the support, and a huge shout out to all my guests, and until next time, be sure to make time to get outside.